PCB Way is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now, if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCB Way is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, I got a huge care package from HLRC and it's their latest product. So I thought we would just open these together before I actually start testing them. And let's just take a look at some things and discuss some things that are going on here. So one, as we can tell, we have the recon. This is a new uh, frame design from Dave uh, C, I think his name. And uh, HLRC basically makes them. So he creates the design of the frame and then they just create them here. So first of all, as you can tell, we got two quadcopters here. We have the recon FPV. And this one here has been designed by Dave C and it's supposed to be eight long range builds. As you can tell, we have GPS, we have Cadex Vista, F7, we have a nice ESC, uh, the receivers also, we have a mounting solution for a naked GoPro or some of those new beta FPV ones, which I still haven't gotten, but I'll be getting one soon. So we'll come back to this in a bit. I also got this here. I have no idea what this is just yet, but the plastic seems pretty decent and they give you two spare plastic pieces. Oh, it's actually really strong plastic, so that's nice to see. It does have a Cadex Vista inside. We'll come back to this in a bit and some electronics as well. So here we'll start off with this one really fast. So what we got is HLRC Zeus 5 AIO. So this is a 5 amp 1 to 2 S all-in-one uh, flight controller and I could already see that it's been conformal coded here. So as we take a closer look at this guy, we see they've already pre-soldered the connectors here, which you could remove if you wanted to, but I think most motors do come with the connectors, especially for this size. So you kind of be good to go into that perspective. We do have our on-screen display. This is an F4 as they're stating. And uh, what's really nice, it's conformal coded on both sides. Pretty tiny FETs, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, so there's using dual FETs for each phase and not separated FETs. So hopefully this should last you depending on your setup. But again, don't put any high demanding setups. This is like a five amp maximum setup here. And they do provide you with just about everything you need as far as I can tell right now. Um, again, this is the first time I'm opening it here. We have XT30, we have some uh, rubber O-rings, we have extra connectors, and uh, we also do have a low ESR capacitor. Now, I do highly recommend you add that low ESR capacitor because filtration is basically non-existent. And um, yeah, it's really, yeah, non-existent really. Uh, so the filtration is very minimal. Maybe you just have one capacitor right there on the battery leads right there. That's where you'd connect the battery here. And uh, you also do have those pins right there. So if you wanted to connect the receiver, I don't know what type of receiver here, uh, probably an FR Sky type layout here. We could see that right there. However, I'm sure you could probably fit some other things as well. So they do give you the pinouts for that if you wanted to kind of just have it uh, lay right on top. So that's kind of nice here that they've done that. All right, so let's put that one to the side. What do we have here? We have HLRC 25. So this is a 25 amp 2 to 6S. Uh, I think Crazy Bee also, also type board here. So I think we saw this the other day online. I didn't know I even got this. So again, immediately we see that it's conformal coded on both sides using dual FETs, which is really nice. So we have one FET here and one FET here for one phase. And that should theoretically give you more reliability in the long run. And we do have our on-screen display. And as far as I believe, this is an F... I don't know what this is, but I think it's an F4. And uh, this is an F7 actually. So that's really nice to see. I just removed the QC stick right there just to make sure. And again, filtration is going to be somewhat minimal. As you can tell, we just see two caps right there, basically on the main battery leads. These two capacitors are going to be for the on-screen display and uh, just some capacitors here and there. But overall, you will definitely need to be adding the low ESR capacitor on any of these boards. It's nothing new here. So keep that in mind. Even on the latest iFlight Beast ones, you should definitely add those. Uh, the, the size of the pads look reasonable. Uh, I think you'll be able to solder there just fine. Uh, these are slightly bigger, as you can tell, much nicer, actually, especially if you're a newcomer and you don't know how to solder that well. I highly recommend you buy a practice board here. And again, for accessories, just a capacitor XT30 pre-made for you, which is really nice. And also rubber gummies. However, in my package here, I only got three. So yeah, maybe they're used to that because most of these, for some reason, like if you ever get any of those pre-bit one, they've always just been using three for some reason. So well, uh, maybe that has something to do with it. So let's just put this away for now. Next thing I got was one of these Wi-Fi modules, which we'll be testing out later on to connect the SpeedDB through it. Um, I don't think we need to open it. It's just a PCB here. So let's take a look at these guys right now. So I just figured out the name of this one. It's called the Moto Whoop 90 millimeter Vista. So I'm guessing there's going to be an, an analog variant as well. So as the name implies, it does have a Vista inside. And it also does come with two spare uh, propeller guards here, which is really nice. And they're very, very strong. I really like that. 
and the frame is all carbon fiber so that's a nice thing uh flex yeah it does have some flex the carbon fiber is a bit thin on the bottom but i guess they're trying to save weight overall if we look at the bottom here again, we see that we have an anti-slip battery pad. This is a proper one. We also do have our battery strap as well. And for the landing, you can see that the plastic kind of portrays a little bit lower than the frame. So it kind of increases the overall lifespan of the bottom part of this. But usually your battery would just, just have you just go sideways just like that. Now these propellers here that are provided, uh, they're no name. Maybe they're by HGLRC themselves. So I'll probably be testing out different ones as well. For motors, they're using 1106. 3800 kv here and for a receiver at least on mine i got an xm plus radio i'll have it linked down below so you can go ahead and uh, check what other flavors it comes with so for the board inside there's no low esr capacitor installed however it's not the same board as that one i could tell by the design the fets are even much larger here so it's one of their latest probably one of their new all-in-ones that could withstand quite a bit more but i would have still loved to see the uh, low esr capacitor into place somewhere but it's nowhere in here so um, that's something you might want to just keep in mind if you do notice anything and if, if even if you don't I'd, I'd still recommend to figure out a way to add a capacitor because you do have quite a lot of space in the middle between the cadex vista and also the board here so you can go ahead and play around with that and try to get a capacitor to be installed in there so the recon here is pretty insane. I mean, look at this. I've never seen a design like this. That's pretty crazy right here. I don't know how useful it would be and how how practical it would be in the long run. And um, and um, it's just uh, it's 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 nice to see that there's new things coming out now. And this is kind of going for the dead cat type of style frame. So it's not a true X or a squashed X. Uh, it's the dead cat style here. And this thing was just designed for one purpose and one purpose only, or actually two, uh, long range HD footage, like ultralight long range HD footage here. You have everything needed to do that. You have your GPS, you have a buzzer in case you lose it with a button right there to turn it off. Very long video transmitter antenna. That's for the Cadex. Don't know how about the, don't know about the analog variant just yet. And for the components inside, they're using their F7 20 by 20 and also another ESC that's a 20 by 20 from HLRC. I don't know which one it is. We do see that low ESR capacitor installed right there, uh, which is which is really good that they've done that. And I'm pretty sure it would it would have been a must here. Cadex Vista. We also do have a really beautiful mounting solution uh, for whether it be the Beta FPV camera or probably a naked GoPro here. I really like seeing that. And for props, they give us gem fans. They give us the 5125 here. Uh, so the three blade propellers, 5.1 inches and 25 pitch here. And they, do they have the adapter? Oh, they do have the adapter. So let's put this to the side real quick. They give you two sets of those. And they also do provide you with two carbon fiber pieces right here. And those are meant to give you overall better structural integrity and definitely something I would uh, personally add. You would connect these two together like that and overall just give you rigidity of the frame here. Now also they do provide you with, I think this is for the beta cam here or whatever it's called. They give you everything you need to set that up so you're not going to have to purchase that separately as you can tell right there. So that's really nice that they've done that. And um, it seems to be pretty good quality actually, printed very well. So that's, that's again really nice. You have all the hardware needed as well to add that into place. Anti-slip everywhere. Uh, the carbon fiber is a bit too thin for my liking though, but I guess they had to try to make it as thin as possible. So if we look at the bottom plate, it looks like it's like a 1.5 millimeter uh, bottom plate here, or it could be two. Also, the top plate is sharing the same characteristics, but at least the arms are in good shape, but it does have some flex. Um, yeah, it does have some flex, but I guess that's the way that it's been designed. So I could totally see that this is the most weakest part that will probably end up cracking. Uh, you probably have just a whole arm pop off there. But I doubt you'll break an arm. I think you'll probably end up breaking the bottom plate or the bottom bottom plate here because there's two of them. Uh, before you break an arm and well that's really it guys so these look really proper i can't wait to actually go test them when the weather gets better and my permission comes in and um yeah and uh, let me know what you guys think if anybody used it let us know down in the comment section that's very important you do that and i'll see you guys in the next one peace